hi and welcome back to my channel if you're new hi and welcome to my channel um yeah i'm going i'm continuing with the rising sign videos for what should have been the month ahead but now we're pretty much halfway through um my birthday was at the start of the month and i wasn't home for a bit um so yeah i've sort of got a bit behind with some things um and didn't fit them into the schedule um yeah so anyway um we're going to look at the second half of the month i guess um and perhaps onwards um as well anyway because if we've got the eclipses if you've probably heard by now um uh, by the time this is uploaded there's probably already gonna have um we're probably already would have had the um, solar new moon eclipse which is in virgo not um libra because i um i'm following the um topocentric true sidereal astrology which uses the visible sky like if you were to look through a telescope and see the actual specific sizes of the constellations rather than tropical that puts them in a neat 30 degree section for every single constellation and they don't include a focus um, which a focus is actually a constellation um, it's not made up <laughs> um, yeah because that's how this that's something the scientific community have a beef with astrology in general um, that they don't respect it because their argument is well firstly that, that most systems don't even include the constellation of a focus and secondly that um that it's it, it's not considering the actual sizes of the constellations and therefore when they're saying the moon is in this sign or that sign it's actually not in that at all it's you know it's often very different occasionally they'll meet up and be the same like when um jupiter has been in retrograde oh no it was venus when venus was in retrograde in the sign of leo um they did match up they were different degrees obviously but they did match up but then in top eccentric near the end of the retrograde venus moved into cancer the sign of cancer for a bit and um now i think she's back in leo but moving forward because she's completely out of her retrograde phase and post shadow so she's moving forward and i think she's still in leo actually um but she's no longer retrograde neither is mercury mercury is also not retrograde now um so yeah so the eclipse is in virgo the new moon eclipse that by the time i upload this will probably have happened however an eclipse is such big powerful potent energy that at least three months either side of the actual event you're going to feel the energies three to six months really but at least three months either side of the event so it's a very long time which is why i sort of said that you know um even though there's only about two to three weeks left of the <laughs> of this month because i've been so late um getting these done um that it's still because of the eclipses it's it's sort of probably going to maneuver into you know down the line not just this month um so keep keep an eye on on what comes through here and see um make a note of what's playing out for you you know as you go through the months um leading up to the end of the year um yeah so two weeks after this eclipse we've got the full moon eclipse is generally um with the eclipse season there's at least one full moon and one new moon eclipse so you've got the new moon is always noted as the solar eclipse solar new moon eclipse and the full moon eclipse is the lunar full moon eclipse and there's usually at least one new moon and one full moon eclipse in the eclipse um, doorway if you want to call it that or the eclipse corridor or whatever when when they come around and so often it it can be a kind of mix amalgamation of both the full moon eclipse energies and the new moon eclipse energies because because well to be able to bring in the new that we want we often have to take note and take stock and look at 
what we might be holding on to or what might be dragging us backwards sort of or, or slowing us down in some way. And we have to let go of that perhaps because of the full moon eclipse. And then we've got that space for the new moon and new energies and the good to come in that we can, you know, work towards bringing in um, with our energies. Um, and so the full moon eclipse um, with the sidereal will be in the sign of Aries and likely that um, tropical will say it's in Taurus, like tropical saying it's the, the new moon is in Virgo, uh, Libra, but it's in Virgo for sidereal. Um, again, if you're looking at the actual size of the constellations and where things are according to that when you're looking through the telescope. That's why um, I've, I've seen a lot of people online, um, they will comment and say, how come when I'm looking at my telescope, you guys are saying the moon or the planet is in this sign when my telescope is showing me when I'm looking through it, it's actually this sign. I don't understand that. And that's, um, you know, that's a problem <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. I get on my soapbox about it because, yeah, I'm sort of, I guess I'm a reformed, whatever you want to call it. Because I used to follow um, tropical and I didn't even know that a focus was a constellation because I didn't make the effort to question it. I sort of just went along with it and thought, oh, yeah, that's how it is. But I never really... Um, What's the word for it? I never really gelled with the sun sign and the rising sign that tropical put me down at. And then I found out that that's not my sun and rising sign anyway, because when I looked at it through sidereal, then it all made sense. And I was like, wow, that's so me in the sidereal signs. But I just could never gel with the um, tropical signs that I was given in the 30 degree setup that they have. Um yeah, anyway, so now the other headlines are Pluto will have stationed direct, which means he's now out of his um, pre-retrograde pre and retrograde energies. But when the, when the planet stations direct, it's at the same time, that means it's moving into its post-shadow. So with Pluto on the 11th, he stationed direct, direct which means he is now in his post-shadow. And as I said, Venus and Mercury are completely out of their post shadows. They're completely um, direct now, so there's no issue there. They're, they're direct. Also, Mars won't be retrograde at all this year. In fact, he's not retrograde until the second half of next year, 2024. Um, yeah, so we don't need to be concerned about that either. So we've got um, Mars and... Um, Venus are direct and Mercury are direct now, so there's no issues there, no no shadow um, phases to consider with those three planets. Um, so Saturn is still retrograde and he won't be stationing direct till 9th of November next month. Neptune um, will be the 6th of December stationing direct again when they move into their post-shadow. Um, Chiron will... Um, be direct on the 27th of December. Uh, Jupiter will be the 31st of December and Uranus won't be until next year on the 27th of January 2024. So I think that I've explained everything. Now I'll just make, uh, uh, just say quickly, um, I, I would um, recommend that you jump into the just the beginning of one of last month's or the months before um, rising sign readings, any rising sign, doesn't matter, um, because at the start of it, I mean, it's very similar, but they're all a little bit different, but they're similar, but it's not specifically for the rising sign at the start. It's just sort of saying the outline of what's going on with the planets. But why I say, why I recommend jump, in, jump back in is because I, in, in those I've given some examples of what to expect with the eclipses and the retrogrades. I spoke of mainly Mercury retrograde, but you can really um, put that with any retrograde planet. You can still get the same sort of um, way to work with it, if that makes sense. So anyway, the, uh, the, the, the 
I've given some examples and ways that you can work with those energies and that is in the first five to ten minutes of each of the rising sign videos from last month and the month before so we're talking august and september so i don't want to do it now because i don't want to make the videos really long um the one before was long but there was a lot of potent energies for the cancerian risers which were really good so i was really stoked for them hopefully this is going to be something like that for you too um, but we'll see what comes through. I think I've covered everything. Um, yeah, I think I've covered it all. So let's jump in and see for you Leo Rises. If I didn't mention it, well, obviously the video title's going to say Leo Rising. Um, yeah, so we've got <laughs> Cancer, which is your 12th house, home and family. And 12th house is um, Piscean themes. Neptune ruled Piscean, Moon ruled Cancer. So you've got two water signs in your 12th house. Well, you know, technically. 12th, 12th house is Piscean themes covered by the sign of Cancer. So that's where the two water comes in. Um, so you've got your spirituality, ESP, um, empathic abilities perhaps and all that covered by the sign of home, family, Cancer. Okay, so last quarter moon. All right, well, that's probably going to be um, near the end of the month then, like right at the tail end of the month. And again, like I said, um, even though we're halfway through the month now, um, I think that these this particular October reading is probably going to span over more than just October um, because of the eclipses. So this is this is see there's two two technically two quarters in in the whole moon cycle for, sort of thing. So here you've got your on this side you've got your full moon. On this side you've got your new moon energy. See, and right smack bang in the middle of both of them is when you'll get the quarter moons and this one says last quarter so this is um when the um when the full moon is waning and moving towards the new moon again now considering when i'm doing this and we're already hitting the um solar new moon eclipse i don't believe it's meaning that because that would have been a week before i mean well, you could consider it that way. Make a note, actually, of the week before anything that came up the week before the eclipse. So the eclipse is, depending on where you're located, the eclipse is around the 14th, 15th. So we're talking, well, the start of October, the, the 3rd, 4th, 5th. You can make a note of any specific thing that might have happened that way. Last quarter moon is... Um, generally about reiterating the full moon energy and if you haven't really made use of the releasing or letting go or tweak making tweaks changes whatever is needed if you haven't taken advantage of that energy to do that this is a reiteration to do that because it's last quarter first quarter is the one that happens after the new moon this one's after the full moon so but otherwise like I was thinking, it's probably at the very tail end of um, of the month because we've got, well, when is, hmm, okay, well, 15th, 29th, full moon. So that would, okay, I get what's going on. Okay, um. So we've got the full moon eclipse on the 29th of October. So it would have to be a week after. So we're looking into November. So I've got a feeling it's sort of spilling into November, this one. Still going to do a November reading and I'm going to make sure I'm doing it a lot earlier than now um, for next month. But um, yeah, I think that that's what's, what's being reiterated here because you will have had the um full moon by the 29th so we're looking at around the 5th of november wait a second when was saturn direct fourth okay well it might have something to do with saturn turning direct 
which then he's moving into his post shadow. We'll see what else comes through. Um, Jupiter. <laughs> Jupiter's retrograde. Again, just because the planets are retrograde, um, well, I say again because I've said it in the other readings, um, just because a planet is retrograde does not mean you're not going to get benefits from it that you wouldn't normally get if you, that you would normally get if um, they were direct. It just means it's telling you to focus more on it and and make use of those energies to 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 look into how you can bring that abundance in, what you can release so that the abundance can come in, perhaps. Well, look, we've got another full moon. You know what I'm going to do? This this is what I'm going to do to make a bit more sense that way. Let's see how it's travelling along. So again, with the release energy, and we've got the full moon eclipse at the end of the month. Okay, so 12th house. 12th house in Cancer. How interesting. Okay, so, so far we've got spirituality, ESP, um, art, beauty. What else is spirituality? Pisces. Um, Pisces can be dreamy, but it can be about your dreams, bringing your dreams to reality, see? Releasing, letting go of, tweaking, changing whatever's in the way that's slowing you down because Jupiter doesn't like going slow. Jupiter's like, <laughs> wants to expand. And maybe you're being asked to expand on whatever hopes, dreams, wishes you've got. I know that the 11th house is often about wishes and hopes and dreams, but for some reason I've got a feeling since it's right next to Jupiter, it's got something to do with psychic abilities, perhaps ESP, art, beauty, music. Uh, well, music's a form of art. Um, home, family or an environment that feels like home and family. Okay, let's see what else comes through. Third house, well, that's Gemini themes. Your potential to learn something and your local neighbourhood. And see, that's higher learning as well. See, because Jupiter rules the sign of Sag in the ninth house, which is travel, expansion, higher learning, philosophy, all that sort of thing, which can tie in as well to, um, to Pisces themes, 12th house and... From memory, Jupiter's a co-ruler of the 12th house, of, Pi of Pisces 12th house as well. Because you've got Neptune and Jupiter. I'm pretty sure that's, that's the co-rulers there. So that makes it even more potent. Third house, where's your third house? In Libra, home family, <coughs> relationships. And we've got Blue. Now my throat's going funny, so I think something to do with speaking up, perhaps. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So my throat's starting to carry on. So, yeah, I think you're needing to speak something. Voice something. Voice. Voice what you want to bring and expand and grow. And see, third house is about early learning. It's the opposite of the Sag Jupiter themes, in a sense. It's still about learning, but it's early learning in like childhood learning um, before you, because the Jupiter ninth house Sag is more about college, university, the higher learning, you know, the, the courses and all that sort of thing. Whereas this is about the um, younger, um, early learning in the early. Um, Oh, what do you guys call it over your way? Um, not middle school, something or other. The 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 younger the younger ages. You know, um, what is it from what five to twelve years old or whatever that sort of thing. And then, of course, I think if I'm right, the middle school is what we call high school over here, where it's um, year seven to twelve, and then you move off to university. Um, Year 7 and 12, 13 years old and so on like that. Um, 
Venus. Now, Venus is direct. Remember, I mentioned Venus is not even in a shadow anymore. Um, the part of you that desires beauty, success, indulgence, and valuables. I said beauty and art. <coughs> yep, yep. You've got to speak something. Let's see what else comes through to see what you need to speak about. The 11th house. Well, there's your hopes and wishes. That's why I was picking up on hopes and wishes. The 11th house. Aquarius themes. Where the cosmos grants wishes, luck, friends, and social occasions. Because also the Gemini house is social. And third house is in Cancer, didn't we say? No, Cancer's 12th house. Third house is uh, Libra. Libra, yes, I think that's right. Yeah, Virgo's second. So Libra's third. So again, all sorts of relationships with um, local neighbourhood, quick trips, like local trips, where this is long-distance trips, you know, like going in an aeroplane overseas and that sort of thing, whereas this is drive down the street kind of thing. <coughs> Yep. Okay. I'd be very surprised if there's nothing to say about you needing to speak up. But maybe maybe the point's already made. Um, 11th house has Gemini. Gem yeah, right. Gemini's sign is co covering the 11th house of the Aquarius themes. So there's definitely something about community. So there is... In that sense, you can't have a community without communicating, which is why my throat's going, because there's communication needed. Mars, Mars is direct, won't be retrograde at all this year. Your physical energy, drive, strength and fighting spirit. And he happens to be also in the middle of your reading, it looks like. Boom, Aries is ruled by the planet Mars. The energy around you is dynamic and spontaneous, crusading, impulsive, action is likely right so it's asking you to be impulsive in that sense <coughs> gosh okay well you're a fire sign you've got jupiter which rules sag you've got aries and mars so there's lots of fire coming in here venus I think, like I said, she's still in your sign, Leo, which is your rising sign. So, you know, this might also have to do with how the world sees you, your rising sign, speaking up about whatever hopes, wishes, dreams you're want to, wanting to bring about, making any tweaks and changes that you need so that you can take full advantage of the um, new moon energies. And like I said um, earlier, with both the eclipses being only two weeks apart, the new moon and the full moon, it's kind of an amalgamation of energies anyway. So you're le releasing, tweaking, changing, whatever, with the full moon energies so that you can then open up for the new moon eclipse energies to bring the expansion and growth to your wishes and, and communicate your wishes and dreams to, to the community perhaps let's see jupiter bam jupiter's come through again expansion so so expansion wants to happen for you guys so you've pretty much to some degree got all three fire signs in here including your rising sign obviously too venus in leo <coughs> oh, speak up guys okay sixth house craft you're leo <laughs> you're the star of the show. Why are you not speaking up? Um, sixth house. Where is sixth house for you? It is Capricorn. Yes. Which is about ambition. Career and ambition. Ambition doesn't have to be a dirty word, you know. Be ambitious. Shoot for the stars. See, it's, look, this one's looking like it's straight heading for the star. Yeah. Leo's usually the star of the show. Shoot for the star. You know, shoot for your star because it's time you did. Expansion and growth is wanting to come to you. Third house. Well, we had third house already and that's covered by the sign of cancer. 
perception do you need to change your perception or do you need to voice whatever hopes wishes and whatever that by default will change other people's perception and then you know the community whatever um family what whether it's actual family or those who feel like family see community local um yeah because sometimes that can happen if we sort of take a chance to speak up about our own um, visions, our own ideas, whatever, you know, voice voice our ideas, it can often by default change the perception of others, you know, in a good way. And I think that's what's trying to come through here. Sagittarius, so now we've got Sag actually, you know, Jupiter ruled Sag, the Voyager. Time to go on that voyage, shoot Shoot for that star because it's yours. Sun. Now you obviously must realize that the sun is your ruling planet. Sun's shining on you. Being. Just be is what's coming to me right now. Just be your amazing Leo self. And self-worth as well, see, because that's a thing with Venus. Venus covers the signs of Libra, which came through. Where did Libra come through again? Third house, Libra's third house. Yeah, Venus covers the signs of Libra and Taurus. Taurus is mainly the one about money and self-worth. The Venus-Libra is the relationship side of it, but... Venus is in your sign at the moment, so I think it's like wanting to give you a big pow of self-worth, self-confidence, standing up proud, shooting your shot, becoming that, shooting at that star and becoming that star, you know, being the Leo star of the show. <laughs> it's your natural, um, what's the word I want to use? Um, your natural instinct as a Leo is to be the star of the show, and so you rightly should. Okay, these may or may not have reversals. We'll walk through it if there is. But let's take a look. Chiron, well, that's upright. Chiron's healing any wounds, which, you know, no matter what sign we are, we've all got Chiron wounds that need healing. We'll never, none of us will ever go, hey, all our Chiron wounds are healed, aren't we great? Or isn't that great sort of thing? It's not going to happen. We've always got something that we need to work through because a lot of the time there can be things embedded that we didn't even realise until we react a certain way to something and go, oh, why are we reacting this way? Because of something way back. Because Chiron's about wounds that are way back, not not some sort of wound that was from last week or last month. This is like way back in childhood. Which again, the childhood early learning, see? And Chiron is in Pisces at the moment, retrograde. Might want to look at your chart to see where your Chiron is. I'd suggest, you know how I got on the bandwagon earlier about the, the different chart systems. Take a look at, get your, uh, I've got it in the description box, all the links. Get your chart generated in the top centric sidereal and then see where your Chiron's located. Um, because it might have quite a bit to tell you that way, what, what sign it's in highly recommend that um eighth house mystery well that's scorpio energy scorpio themes what is in your eighth house da, 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 da. Uh, pisces eighth house is scorpio themes which is water pisces is water and this is in reverse mystery Mm. Well, Pluto, like I said, was retrograde. He's now direct. 
but he's now in his post shadow. It could be reiterating that. Or, I'm coming back to it, I don't think it's actually a mystery to you, which is why it's in reverse. What's going on here? I don't think it's a mystery to you that you have not, um, you know, jumped into this energy and, 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 um, and brought your dreams to fruition. Something's been sabotaging or holding you back. Tweak and change what needs to be done and get yourself ready for the um, new moon eclipse energies that want to come through for you. You've got expansion and growth twice. And the sun is here. What have you got? Jupiter, Venus, the sun, which it could be about your sun sign as well. Chiron's jumped in here too. Jupiter, Venus, the sun and Chiron might be something you can check. And Mars. Did I say Mars? I don't think I did. Might want to check where they are located in your chart. Might give you a bit more information. Okay, what else have we got here? Fourth house, home and family. See? Cancerian themes. Yeah. Yeah. So what feels like family, community that feels like family. It may or may not be your actual family or it can be a community that feels like family, that feels like a neighbourhood sort of, um, what do they call it, a oh, cottage industry or something, neighbourhood. Um, oh, I can't think of the word. But yeah, a sort of close-knit um, sort of setting is what I'm trying to sort of go uh, uh, bring through I'm not sure okay the, where did I say Sag was Sag is in your fifth which is the Leo themed house we already covered third house did we cover sixth house I think we did yeah six is in Capricorn eighth did we cover that yeah that's in Pisces what else was there eleventh um 11th was Gemini, right? We got that. Yeah, I think we covered all the houses. And fourth house is Scorp. So see how it all sort of... Ah, and look, Sag, expand. So you've got Sag twice here. Didn't Sag? Yeah, Sag came through. Go on the voyage to expand and grow your wishes, dreams, hopes, all that sort of thing. Clear away anything negative so that you can have that space for the good to come in. Get that out of the way so that the new moon eclipse energies can do their, their thing. Yeah. And bring you, bring you luck, luxury, joy, happiness. So you can be that Leo lion you're supposed to be. <laughs> No pressure, but yeah, you're supposed to be the king of the jungle, no matter what gender you are. Jump into your wishes, hopes and dreams, because the um, the eclipse wants you to do that. Oop. Here we go. Okay, so we've got our first one. All right, so what other numerology for the Leo Rises. Sorry about that, it fell on the floor. Okay, is there any other messages? Might just one more time, okay. Yep. Okay, I've got any other Wow, okay. Alright, so what do we have here? Are they all upright? We don't have any reversals in this anyway, so, yeah, don't worry about it. Um, okay. So this was the first one that jumped. Love, and that can be in all forms, friendship. Um, we've got, remember how we had, um, was it third house in Libra? Libra's about the relationship energy of relationships of all kinds. And love can come 
in that form in or in different forms for different relationships and self-love and there's lots of blue there here we go again remember my throat was going funny earlier um throat chakra blue throat is the throat chakra color six is temporary opportunity so you've got that opportunity now to clear away whatever needs clearing away so that you are not held back so you can jump into all this expansive expansion growth fiery energy that wants you to propel forward okay and then we've got physical activity well there's yeah with all the fire there will be physical activity i mean it could be that maybe also because a lot of the time if 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 we've haven't sort of been moving around or whatever that that doesn't physical activity i mean you don't have to um what's the word for it you don't have to pretty much kill yourself with five hours of, of um you know running a marathon or whatever but forms even light exercise or walking or whatever or even dancing to a, a quick song something like that moving moving your body moves the energy and therefore it will change you it will lift your mood as well and so we already covered six temporary opportunities so that's doubling up here and seven is the mind and creativity six and seven together is four which is um the number of the builder expansion and growth again see what can you build what would you like to build these energies are saying make that make that um what's the word i want to make that time make that effort for you bring your hopes and wishes to fruition because there's a lot of luck and expansion and growth that wants to come through for you remember we've got venus direct in in your sign in your rising sign this is a big deal bring it bring it bring it bring it <laughs> i don't know what else to say bring it forward your wishes and dreams need to come into reality they need to be manifested that's going to be healing for you it's going to heal some of your chiron wounds by making that effort your fire sign step into that firepower the sun's here too saying yes go for it and then what's this one love partnership well, we were talking about the partnership thing here and the um again it doesn't have to be romantic it can be all forms of relationship um and you've got your your um aquarius 11th house themes there um 11th house in gemini communication again communication communication so love partnership we've got the blue throat chakra there purple is um quite a regal color too it, it, it's often um used as a cure in feng shui i think it's like for the for the finances here we've got money and self-worth sort of thing with venus um yeah and i think if i'm right i think it's actually in the um south southeast sector you can put the pur the dark purple color and it's um a cure apparently okay so this one is love partnership and i mean that can even be in business if you both share the same love of something that you the, the business um ethos is about or whatever Think that's the word for it but yeah the the um what's it called the um business model that sort of thing if, if that's the if it's a business thing um but yeah so partnering with others is going to be helpful and that's orange which is your sacral chakra creativity sun fifth house we've got fifth house here as well which is leo themes your rising sign obviously fifth house for you is not in your rising sign it's in sag yeah it's in sag 
oh that's third house but fifth house came through didn't it or did i just say fifth Sag in fifth Sag in fifth i think that's what happened there yeah yeah because that's third house um covered by cancer but the gemini themes lots of communication lots of creativity lots of expansion lots of fire jump in take it take that opportunity now see third time with a six see two is again relating to others the partnering with others six temporary opportunity two and six is eight which is money and stability and self-worth i think um to a degree as well and then we have hang on move them across and get them all up here i think if i can i've got too much virgo it's annoying <laughs> um anyway rebirth look rebirth yes and again the blue so you need to speak your your hopes wishes to the community to whoever feels like family or the to family or the family community or community that feels like family you are needing to communicate that there's lots of communication with gemini coming through and um lots of fire sun jupiter expansion growth it's yeah you're gonna have a rebirth and this is see how that was the um sacral this is the base chakra and we've got the self-worth thing coming through again money and self-worth see when you feel good about yourself you can actually see things come flooding in in a good way so clear out any negativity because you don't need it holding you back and then you'll be having the space for the for the new moon energy even though the full moon's after the new moon it like i said the the energies are amalgamated in a sense kind of thing because of the three month thing on each side anyway and they're only two weeks apart so use the full moon energy and then jump into the new moon energy to bring all these things to you okay one is emotional vitality and personal power right and then we've got six again <laughs> one and six is seven the mind and creativity communication creativity think you've got the picture guys so yeah you've got some good energy coming through for you guys as well yay okay so what does the universe want you to know about abundance messages of abundance for the leo rises for october and however long this is with this eclipse and everything however long this needs to cover whoops sorry about the knocking Okay, we will get abundance messages. Sometimes they do this, but they want me to go through it a couple of times. Okay, so. Okay, what abundance messages for the Leo rises? Yep. <laughs> wow. How many are there? One more go. Okay. Yep. Oh. Yep, okay, we're done. Okay, how many came through? Let's have a look. One. One, okay. Then we've got these. Okay. I think these came through second, didn't they? All right. The trick with spending money lies in see spending lies in knowing with every fiber of your being that it will return and so it must as if on wings the universe yeah you see this is what I've, I've mentioned once before while we're in our four of pentacles holding on to our money because we're worried about not being able to get more coming in we're actually stopping the actual flow of money the energy of it and in that sense, by doing that, we're inadvertently stopping the flow of money coming to us. So even if we spend just a little bit, we're still making sure that we're keeping that flow of money coming and going. Um, and yeah, so 
don't fear i mean don't don't spend the whole budget you know on ridiculous things or whatever but know that some amount of spending is going to still bring in more after the fact so don't be afraid to spend some money and maybe because this is love and luxury see maybe you need to treat yourself to something self-love like i was saying give yourself a little bit of a luxury thing some sort of luxury allow yourself that to be healing for you which might be something to do with the clearing thing you know t making those tweaks and changes do something nice for yourself get yourself some sort of luxury thing going you know have some enjoy some sort of luxury which will get you in a better mood and see physical activity as well dance to a song even if it's a three minute song just dance around for three minutes might be all that you need to do and then you're going to be in a different frame of mind to be bringing in more wealth and value because you're also going to then be working on knowing your own value as well and feeling valuable because you are and then you're going to open up to the solar eclipse energies that want to bring in a rebirth for you and bring in some good expansion and growth and bring in the wishes that you have wanted to manifest that perhaps were sabotaged until now well, don't let it sabotage you anymore <laughs> you've got your marching orders leo rises okay isn't it a hoot of all the people in all the world who truly get it few actually give it to themselves here we go again see self-worth self-love whether it is uh, whether it is you want oh, oh sorry it's not whether whatever it is you want start give yourself compliments praise and presence see yes healing it's time that you bought yourself something nice i think or at least in some way treated yourself to something luxurious because it's going to be healing your soul and getting you in the perfect prime position to bring those wishes to fruition that you've had held back that you you know maybe by default you self-sabotage without even knowing that you did it okay so give yourself compliments praise and presence give yourself time permission and love see how much love is coming in here maybe it's a love partnership with the universe in that you are showing the universe that you love yourself enough to pamper yourself which then the universe goes oh that's what you want i'll give you more more reasons to feel pampered more reasons to feel self-worth more reasons to feel love and luxury hopefully this is making sense um sometimes i'm not sure if i'm getting it out right or not but anyway um so give yourself hugs kisses and smiles winks laughs and applause yes look at yourself in the mirror and go yay i've done great today it, yes it sounds stupid but so what you know give yourself that give yourself the luxury allow yourself to experience luxury just for no other reason but just for you not for anyone else for you you're leo you're supposed to be the star of the show you can't be the star of the show when you've got a ball and chain holding you back when you're getting sabotaged that's that's not no wonder you haven't been on stage if that's the case you can't get to it because you've got a ball and chain stopping you and slowing you down so you can't climb up onto the stage and say here i am which is exactly what you should be doing mars and aries are here and sag saying do that jump into all this fiery energy because it wants to support you um okay so you give yourself all those lovely things start to give yourself all those lovely things and this is where the universe is talking to you directly and i will give you even more like i said now please this is what the universe is saying to you do it now as soon as this video finishes run and do something 
luxurious for yourself. Allow yourself to experience luxury. I'm, I'm bullying you um, to pamper yourself. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, so I think you get the point anyway. Sorry if I'm being a bit bossy. I tend to do that sometimes when I get a sort of excitable. Um, okay, let the status symbols you seek most be. Be self-made adventures that excite you at dawn, challenge you by day and surprise you by night. Self-made being the operative word. And here we go with our wishes. Remember, wishes, 11th house. You've got this. Ah, oh, this is sort of really overall the energy I'm getting for most of the signs, actually. It's time to jump into these powerful energies. It is eclipse season. Yay! We shouldn't be fearing the eclipses or the retrogrades. This is our time to really tap into these potent energies to improve our lives. Your wishes want you, if that makes sense. Give yourself enough luxury and love to pamper yourself and show the universe, heal your some of your Chiron wounds, I say some because, we, like I said earlier, none of us are ever going to just go, hey, all our Chiron, Chiron wounds are healed. Um, yeah, but yeah. It's by you pampering yourself, you're going to be able to communicate what you need to communicate with um, those who feel like family or who are family. Um, and the visions you have, the, the wishes that you have, will get fulfilled. Um, Self-made being the operative word. Creatorhood rocks. The un you might even be a creator. You might have a platform. So with a community that feels like family. Pamper yourself. Jump in. Bring your wishes to fruition. Again, because other people might also be in that community, um, will benefit. And I mean, what's that saying? Um, oh, I think it's something like, if, if mum's not happy, nobody's happy kind of thing. In the same sense, no matter what your gender, if you're not running at 100% pretty much, then you're not if you have a platform and you, you have a, a community following, you're not running at 100% for them either. So you're not, you're not, um, they're not getting the benefits of you being at full capacity and being a Leo at full capacity would be amazing. I'm not a Leo riser, so I, you know, <laughs> wish I was. Sometimes I sort of don't get the confidence and sometimes I do, like now. Um... But yeah, so hopefully this is making sense. I really hope I'm explaining it well enough. Um, but yeah, pamper yourself, get yourself in that right attitude to clear away any negativity and jump into these powerful, potent retrograde, retrograde, yeah, retrograde, Jupiter retrograde, Jupiter expansion. See, Jupiter jumped through quite a bit. Jupiter and Sag retrograde. Jupiter's retrograde but the expansion and the growth along with the potent energy of the eclipse bam and see this is where the Virgo because the eclipse the new moon eclipse is in Virgo solar new moon eclipse which is telling you to you know get your sh sh together get your stuff together kind of thing get yourself pampered organize that get rid of any any Thing holding you back to heal some of those Chiron wounds and then get yourself in a prime position to grab hold see all temporary opportunity four times four sixes are 24 and that's a six boom again for the number of the builder four sixes 24 two and four is six temporary opportunity so it's saying get in there and do this and then, and, and then you're in a prime position to grab hold of the potent, powerful, expansive energies of 
the new moon eclipse who happens to be right next to Jupiter expansion and growth. If you've got a platform, you, you'll be, you, yeah, you won't know yourself once you give yourself that, that important love and attention because then you will be able to operate much more um, smoothly is the word, I guess, much more easily and it's not going to be a strain, I guess, um, because you've filled your cup. Yeah, that you know how they say um, you can't pour from an empty cup. Fill your cup first and then you will be running at a higher percentage, if not 100%. And as a Leo, that's going to be amazing to see. And anyone who's in your community, I wish I was too, actually, because I'd like to get the benefits of you running at 100%. Okay. Um, you wondering how would be as silly as me wondering why. I don't and neither should you. I mean, let's not be that crazy. The universe. Again, your wishes can come to fruition. Don't be worried about the how. Get yourself pampered so it heals some of your wounds. Jump in and start doing what you can to bring those wishes to fruition, whether that's simply visualising, whether it's, you know, writing or painting or, or um, creating content, making those moves towards your wishes which then will mean that the universe is coming in line with you because you're showing the universe that you're important you believe you're important enough to pamper yourself so then the universe goes oh you want this do you and and if you're putting out content or, or whatever as well certain content after you've pampered yourself by the way you put out the content and then the universe goes, oh, that's what you want. Okay, I'll give you more of, of, of that sort of thing and make life easier for you so things are flowing far better and easier. See, the love partnership between you, the universe, the eclipses, the retrogrades, all this energy, you know, you can you can come together with it and, and make it work to your benefit, in your favour can take advantage of these energies. They're not here to punish you. Not at all. I, I love the eclipses and the retrogrades, I have to say. I think that's kind of obvious to quite a few people these days. But, um, yeah, anyway, um, yeah, let's see what the guardian angels want you to know to close out this reading I don't know if I've been five hours or whatever <laughs> I have no idea I'm just going with the flow not stressing oh we've got okay is there any more yes there is okay okay that's it now all right so what did we get here Um, so we've got gratitude thank you this is a heartfelt thanks to you from someone you recently helped in some way probably from your platform see create creatorhood um, I your guardian angel also wish to thank you for the unconditional love you emanate to the earth humanity and those around you thank you thank you thank you you are eternally blessed. May peace, grace and love forever guide you along your sacred path. Yeah, see, it's the self-love thing. I think the love is mainly about self-love because by showing your self-love, then you're then with your whatever you cre create on your platform, if that's what you have, or otherwise if you don't, you probably need to. Maybe that's the way you need to go to bring your wishes to fruition and get that community involved and have that family environment because a lot of the time as crazy as it might sound a lot of the time 
the communities can often feel more like family than our actual families, which is kind of sad. At the time. But, you know, I love my family, but, you know. <laughs> um, I think you get what I mean. But, yeah, so if you haven't got some sort of platform, I think it's time you got one. Um, and you're Leo, so you shouldn't be afraid to jump in and do it. You're Leo rising. I, yeah, I think that the love thing is love within between you and the universe and the um, planets and the energies, you know, because by... Again, I think I didn't finish what I started before, but by pampering yourself and healing some of those wounds, you're then going to be able to um, put that energy also into this community of yours. And the other people are going to feel the benefits. That's what I was saying earlier. I, I wish I, I would love to actually also feel the benefits of, of you running at 100%. As a Leo riser, that's going to be potent and powerful. Fantastic energy, fiery, fantastic energy. Lots of fire wants to work with you. Relax. Yeah, here we go. Relax and pamper yourself. Yes, relax. There is plenty of time to do and achieve all you desire. Your wishes. Remember these, these um, eclipses new and full moon are running like for another three months after the actual events anyway so you do have plenty of time with this um, place your hands gently on your heart and allow your breath to guide you to a quiet space within pamper yourself quiet space within um, imagine yourself bathed in golden light there's been a lot of golden fiery energies coming through the golden light of the sun which is your ruling planet um flowing from the eternal heart of God. I, your guardian angel, am with you. Allow me into your heart. You will accomplish more by focusing on that which is most important in life. Love, love, self-love, healing, needed now. As soon as this finishes, jump, go. Pamper yourself. Intuition. Trust your intuition and know that what seems logical may not necessarily be right. The answer to your question lies inside your heart. Here we go again. Um, endless possibilities exist for you. Stop trying to work it all out and feel your way through. We, your angels, will guide you. Trust your feelings. What feels right is right. Go with your feelings. Fill your cup and then jump into this other stuff. And that will be how you clear anything away that's holding you back, heal some of those Chiron wounds and be operating at 100% Leo that you, you know, it, it, it is your instinctual, what, what, how do I explain it? What the world needs you to be as a Leo, running at 100% and being happy and joyful, you know, not being overworked and stressed out, doing what you love, you know, not not wiping yourself out without resting or anything. Give yourself that love and attention and pamper yourself. Miracle. Dearest one, even if all hope seems lost, let not hope slip away. For I, your guardian angel, am constantly by your side surrender all your concerns to me and trust in the healing power of love please believe that you are never alone together we shall work through each issue see love partnership that's what i was picking up not so much of a physical one with um someone else it may be but um the eclipse is not in libra it's in virgo for this and this is giving me virgo vibes of let's fix things or or or, or um, make the needed changes, repairs, improvements, that sort of thing. Improvement orientated is the Virgo sign. Surrender all your concerns to me and trust in the healing power of love. Please believe that you are never alone. Together we shall work through each issue or situation which is of concern to you. All heals, Chiron, all heals with the passing of time. Magic and miracles are about to manifest. Yes! Creatorhood rocks. If you're not a creator, 
you're a Leo riser. I know I'm, I'm doing the stereotype thing, but you should be if you're not. Don't be afraid to get out there and put yourself on that stage because when you let go of that ball and chain, you're going to be free to run. Mm. Okay, and we've got opportunity. Wondrous possibilities and opportunities await you. Stop dwelling on past mistakes. Let it go. Um, surrender the past lovingly. There is nothing to regret. All is always in perfect and divine order. Everything that you've ever experienced has helped you in some way. The past is behind you. The path ahead is clear. Move forward joyfully and fulfill your heart's desire. Yeah, fulfill your wishes. I think you've got the message. Now, I want to read this again because I do. <laughs> I want to reiterate it if I haven't reiterated it 50,000 times over. Sorry, but, you know, I like to do that over and over and over again. Um, but, yeah. So what we're reading is all heals with the passing of time. Magic and miracles are about to manifest. You have powerful manifestation abilities. Tap into them. Pamper yourself first, though. That's an order. <laughs> Allow yourself to enjoy some sort of luxury, whatever that is for you. Pamper yourself so that you can heal some of those Chiron wounds and you can get rid of the boil and chain, clear, any, clear anything, tweak, make tweaks, changes, whatever is needed, and then jump into that energy of of bringing your wishes to fruition, starting a platform if you haven't already got one, or knowing that if you have one, you're going to be running at a higher percentage, if not 100%, and you're going to be in full Leo um, full Leo outfit, full Leo, um, you'll have the full Leo suit on her. You know, you'll have the crown on the, um, as the, the lion, the king of the jungle. I don't know. I think I'm getting a bit sort of, I <laughs> hopefully you, hopefully you're getting the message anyway. So this, yeah, the eclipse and Jupiter next to each other yes this isn't an eclipse card but i'm taking it as that's the new moon use the full moon eclipse even though it's after the new moon eclipse two weeks after like i said they're so close with the two weeks thing and they've both got the three months either side so they're sort of an amalgamation so you can in effect use the full moon eclipse first so that then you can jump into the new moon eclipse which that energy you can work with for the next three months pretty much and Jupiter's not stationing direct until the very end of this year 31st of December so you've got all that time no need to rush but I would be rushing into this pampering thing first and then see where you want to go from there because you're going to have your mind clearer um, mind and creativity seven remember one and six comes to a seven but yeah jump into this this is such a massive opportunity like remember how i got the four sixes 24 comes to a six again so it's really kind of screaming at you this is what needs to happen pamper yourself first fill your cup clear away any 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 things holding you back sabotaging whatever so that that is no longer in reverse and um and th and then yeah, expansion and growth and luck wants to come for you. Boom. Self-love and partnering with the universe and the eclipses and the planets and the retrogrades. It's all wanting to work in your favor. Magic and miracles are about to manifest for you. Opportunities are coming and possibilities. You've got this. Wow, Leo rises. This is fantastic energy. So on that note, I wish you all the best of luck with it. Or, and until next time, bye for now.